If you've ever owned, fostered or walked a giant breed before, chances are you know exactly how strong and difficult to control they can be. While training is the only foolproof method that can keep you and your dog safe, the world is an unpredictable place and we need to prepare for everything and always think safety first when restraining and walking our pets. When picking equipment, we need to think not only about what is strong and sturdy and what helps us control the pets if need be, but also what is safe for our dog to be wearing in case they do lunch. Here are some examples of good versus bad harness shapes. As a general rule, always go for Y-shaped harnesses that do not obstruct the shoulders and do not cinch behind the elbows and also do not constrict, especially on the vital organs like the stomach. Personally, I use the Rogue Royalty Super Tough Harness. As you can see, there is no obstruction of movement, plenty of elbow space, plenty of shoulder space. Even when pulling, the dog is able to completely lean into the weight without any obstruction. The dog can sit, drop, stand and perform pivots without ever hitting the harness with his forelimbs or having to restrict his gait. For walking on leash, I like to use the Rogue Royalty Multi-Connect Leash. There are plenty of options for multi-connect leashes to be available for purchase online. I like this one due to the sturdiness, length and strength of the buckles. As you can see here, I am demonstrating the many different variants for connecting the leash. Be careful to avoid the myth that giants need chain collars and leashes. If your dog is bucking and actively lunging, any attempt to grab anywhere other than the designated handle along the chain may result in cut palms, degloving, broken fingers or worse. I have even seen fingers caught in the links. If you have an issue where the dog actively is trying to break or bite the leash, instead of trying chain, try muzzle training instead until the habit is gone. On an average walk, if you wish to change your connection depending on what environment you're about to enter, it's very simple and basic and takes all of two seconds. If you are new to your own dog or if your dog is about to enter an overstimulating environment, or if your dog is just starting to learn loose leash walking, I'd personally recommend connecting to both the front and the back of the harness by both ends of the leash. I also demonstrate how this can attach around your shoulders. However, it is strongly advisable that you never walk a dog in this position, as I will explain later on in the video. When walking off leash, simply connect the leash to itself around your shoulders and then it won't slip and slide off and you can have your hands free to play games and run amok with your dog. Overall, it's a super versatile leash and I highly recommend. Don't be afraid to tether your dog if you need your hands free to handle a volatile situation. And when tethering, expecting the dog to lunge, simply add an extension bungee to ease the shock. For dogs in training, try training labelled equipment such as collars, leashes and vests and always muzzle dogs if you're unsure of how they will react. I also highly recommend a high quality agitation collar such as the one you see here from 4 Dog Trainers. A good agitation collar sits high up on the throat, is thick and padded with a soft and stiff handle for easy grip. Always ensure it is not choking your dog but not loose enough to fall off. And now with the equipment covered, let's get to handling. Ensure any leash you use has a normal handle. Insert your hand like so and close your fingers and thumb around it. Hold it close to your chest with your elbows tucked in. If the dog were to lunge, it would simply pull out of your grip without damaging your hand. Wrapping your leash around your wrist or your fingers is a common way to cause degloving as the leash cannot get off your hand in the event of an emergency or a lunge. Likewise, the common error of wrapping a leash around fingers to provide better grip will only cause potential damage for broken fingers and degloving in the case of a lunge or if the dog runs in the wrong direction suddenly. Never permanently attach a leash to any part of your body, or fingers or waist. If the dog were to lunge in this position, you could get severe spinal damage or worse. For hands-free running, source an appropriate belt that fastens around the buttocks and legs designed specifically for your dog to pull you through. These can be found at many online dog sporting stores. Avoid pet store belt shaped ones. When standing, make sure that your feet are never accidentally together because any sudden tug or lunge will pull you straight over. Always have your feet in a stance position, side on, knees slightly bent, not locked, handle held with the same hand that the dog is on the side of, and leash held with the opposite hand. Notice me turning my hips into the dog. When I turn my hips the wrong way, you can notice I cannot turn my hips into the dog, and the dog will simply pull me onto my face. Always have your fore knee 
where the dog's chest or shoulder will be and turn your butt into them. And when using the agitation collar, lift up slightly and twist away from the dog to pull them slightly with you, using your knee to pivot. Here is a very simple demonstration. I have connected the leash to both the front and the back of the harness and I'm also holding the collar. Notice I am lifting upwards with the collar and I am pivoting away with my body and the front of the leash, moving my butt into the dog. When there is no leash and simply a collar, again, the same pivoting motion over the knee and moving away with a stance position will not only offset the lunge of the dog, but will also prevent them from digging their heels in and lunging harder or bracing into the pull. Notice how I am relying on my full body to perform the pivot and not simply my arm strength. When using a leash, ensure that you are always standing on the side that the front connecting leash is facing. Always hold the back of the harness tighter because we want to minimize the twisting of the front of the dog. When dogs are lunging, they are using a lot of force and while controlling them, we want to minimize as much distress on their spine as we possibly can. With your knee in the chest of the dog, draw the dog horizontally over your knee. Do not kick, hit, knee or prod the dog. This is a sensitive area for the dog and we do not want to hurt them. To minimize needing physical management, train a U-turn. Using a treat or in Dave's case, a hand target, walk forward with your dog and then show them your hand next to their face. When they automatically turn their head to check it out, verbally mark yes and quickly walk backwards to give them their reward a few steps behind. Perform this faster and faster and slowly fade out the hand cue. Keep this game light and fun and make sure that you do it in a low distraction environment off leash. Add a verbal cue such as let's go to the dog. Eventually, as the dog starts to need less and less visual prompts to do the U-turn and can hear verbal cue and turn around very quickly, we can start increasing the speed, increasing the distraction and build up to putting on a leash. When placing the leash on, if your dog ever gets to the end of the leash or actually feels the leash pressure, you've progressed through the steps too quickly or added too much distraction and you will need to go back to the beginning and start again with off leash, no distractions. Practice this in the park, in the car park, around bins, around cars, around any sort of blind corners or obstacles, even around dogs at the park until your dog understands to U-turn on cue whenever you say. This way, if you ever see anything coming up that could be a problem, simply U-turn your dog and get out of there with no pressure.